Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm talking about Mary Mallon. I'm going to read her article on Wikipedia. She was considered the first asymptomatic carrier due to typhoid fever. At the end of the reading, I'm going to code through Gematria many of the words and names that were in the article. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about Gematria in case you're new to this. Gematria is a numerical, numerological system by which Hebrew letters correspond to numbers. This system, developed by practitioners of Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, derived from Greek influence and became a tool for interpreting biblical text. Now, I made another video about Gematria. It was really basic. I'm, I'm not really teaching about it on that video, but I did mention that Plato said something about Gematria. I think it was the essential force of a word. So it's the very basic of a word. It's a number. So we'll get into that later. Let's read a little bit about Mary. Mary was born on September 23rd, 1869. She died on November 11th, 1938, at the age of 69. She's also known as Typhoid Mary, an Irish-born cook believed to have, infected, to have infected 53 people, three of whom died with typhoid fever. She was identified as an asymptomatic carrier of the disease. She persisted in working as a cook in which she exposed others to the disease. She was twice forcibly quarantined by authorities and she was in quarantine for like 23 years. She was born in Cookstown, County Tyrone, Ireland in 1869. Now Cookstown is interesting because she's also a cook. So here, we, that's why I circled some of these words. She immigrated to the U.S. when she was 15, and she became a cook for affluent families. From 1900 to 1907, Mary worked as a cook in the New York City area for eight families, seven of which contracted typhoid. In 1900, she worked in Maroonek, New York, where within two weeks of her employment, residents developed typhoid fever. In 1901, she moved to Manhattan, where members of the family for whom she worked developed fevers and diarrhea, and the laundress died, the person that did the laundry. Mallon then went to work for a lawyer and left after seven of the eight people in that household became ill. In June of 1904, she was hired by a prosperous lawyer, Henry Gilsey. Within a week, the laundress was infected with typhoid and soon four of the seven servants were ill. No members of the Gilsey's family were infected because they resided separately and the servants lived in their own house. The investigator, Dr. R. L. Wilson, concluded that the laundress had caused the outbreak, but he failed to prove it. Immediately after the outbreak began, Mary left and moved to Tuxedo Park, where she was hired by George Kessler. Two weeks later, the laundress in his household was infected and taken to St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center, where her, ca her case of typhoid was the first in a long time. Now, I want to stop here and let me get to the next page. And I just want to read you what typhoid is because typhoid is actually a bacterial infection. And here's, I actually came up, I thought I would look up bubonic plague, which is also a bacterial infection. So this wasn't bubonic, this is typhoid. It's a bacterial infection and it causes symptoms similar to the flu, like headache, diarrhea, etc. You can look it up. I'm not going to get into typhoid too much, but I just want to let you know bacteria is different than a virus. Bacteria actually 
some bacteria float in the air and they have a motor. It's called a flagella, flagellin motor. Um, typhoid, I don't believe, no, sorry, floats. I think um, if you look it up and I had done some research about bacteria and of course we have bacteria in our gut, but I think the typhoid is found like in food and water. So let's move on. In August 1906, Mallon took a position in Oyster Bay on Long Island with the family of a wealthy New York banker, Charles Henry Warren. Mallon went along with the Warrens when they rented a house in Oyster Bay for the summer of 1906. So from August 27th to September 3rd, six of the 11 people in the family came down with typhoid fever. Now the number six and the number 11 are really significant in Gematria, but I'm going to show you later that I'm concentrating on actually two other numbers for the story. Okay, so it says, uh, read on, the disease of that time was unusual in Oyster Bay, according to three medical doctors who practiced there the landlord, understanding that it would be impossible to rent a house with the reputation of typhoid, hired several independent experts to find the source of the infection. They took water samples from pipes, faucets, toilets, and the cesspool, all of which were negative for typhoid. So now on to the investigation. In late 1906, Mallon was hired by Walter Bowen, whose family lived on Park Avenue. The maid got sick on January 23rd, another 23. I think I show some of that later, 23. And soon Charles Warren's only daughter got typhoid and died. The case, this case, helped identify Mallon as the source of the infections. George Sofer, an investigator hired by Warren after the outbreak in Oyster Bay had been trying to determine the cause of typhoid outbreaks in well-to-do families when it was known that the disease typically struck in unsanitary environments. He discussed that a terrible, I'm sorry, a female <laughs> Irish cook who fit the physical description was involved in all of the outbreaks. He was unable to locate her because she generally left after an outbreak began without giving a forwarding address. Soper then learned of an active outbreak in a penthouse on Park Avenue and discovered Mallon was the cook. Two of the household servants were hospitalized and the daughter of the family died of typhoid. I want to point something out. And because these were well-to-do families, and it was unusual, and they considered that to be a disease and unsanitary. They definitely got on the case to find out where was this all coming from. I mean, these are rich people that are having, some of the children died and people were getting sick and they, it was affecting them financially. So they definitely got on to the case. So Soper first met Malin in the kitchen of the Bowens and accused her of spreading the disease. Though Soper himself recollected his behavior behavior as quote as diplomatic as possible unquote he infuriated Mallon and she threatened him with a carving fork when Mallon refused to give samples Sofer decided to compile a five-year history of her employment he found that of the eight families that had hired Mallon as a cook members of seven claimed to have contracted typhoid fever then Sofer found out where Mallon's lover lived and arranged a new meeting there. He took Dr. Raymond Hobler in an attempt to convince Mary to give them samples of urine and stool for analysis. But if you notice here, I want to comment that Mary's lover never was deemed to have an illness or be sick. That never says in this article that he was sick and obviously she was living with him and never, or, well, actually, I don't know if he, she was living with him. I think it is kind of insinuated, but he's not sick and that's her boyfriend. All right, well, I don't know. They're gonna to try to say that Mary caused these problems. 
So they tried to convince her also, but she was a feisty little lady, it seems. And we're going to look at her name in a bit. Her name, the meaning of her name, Mary. All right, so they obviously couldn't convince her. She refused to cooperate, so she's rebellious. And that's at the top here. Sorry, I wrote rebellious because that's what her name means. Believing that typhoid was everywhere and that the outbreaks had happened because of contaminated food and water. At that time, the concept of healthy carriers, and I underline these words because they're important later on. So healthy carriers, carriers was unknown to healthcare workers at the time. So 1906, more than 100 years ago. So Soper published his findings on June 15, 1907 in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which we now, you know, we abbreviated the AMA. The AMA was actually created on May 7, 1847. And this is some, I guess, 60 years later. And they hadn't yet deemed the term the germ theory of disease. Okay, so he published this. What I'm going to read now is the publication, what went into the publication of the AMA. It was found that the family changed cooks on August 4th. This was about three weeks before the typhoid epidemic broke out. The new cook, Mallon, remained in the family only a short time and left about three weeks after the outbreak occurred. Mallon was described as an Irish woman about 40 years old, tall, heavy, single. She seemed to be in perfect health. Okay, now the first quarantine. I'm going to move forward kind of quickly. I'm probably going to paraphrase now. If you want, you can click on, go to Wikipedia and click on Mary Mallon, and then you can read with me. So Sofer notified the New York City Health Department, and I did look him up, and I think he, I think he worked for the Health Department. Okay, so the investigators realized that Malin was a typhoid carrier. Under Section 1169 and 1170 of the Greater New York Charter, Malin was arrested as a public health threat. So they realized, they didn't even actually prove this. It's kind of funny because they're assuming. But, okay, so Malin was arrested. Hmm. Okay, she was forced into an ambulance by five policemen and Dr. Josephine Baker, who at some point had to sit on Malin to restrain her. So this, this Mary Malin is very feisty. She just didn't believe it. She didn't want people saying that she had this disease. So she was transported to the William Parker Hospital where she was restrained and forced to give samples. For four days, she wasn't even allowed to get up and use the bathroom on her own. Then they say, the massive amounts of typhoid bacteria that were discovered in her stool samples indicated that the infection center was in her gallbladder. Now, I don't know, this was back in 1906. I don't know about x-rays, it's not really saying, I mean, this is just a very, you know, small article. Not really telling much what actually happened, but I think they're assuming a lot. Under questioning, Malin admitted that she almost never washed her hands. This was not unusual at the time. The germ theory of disease was still not fully accepted. So that's an indication that they were trying to make people realize or wanted people to realize that that's their theory. It's still a theory. On March 19, 1907, Mary was sentenced to quarantine on North Brother Island. She, on, while on quarantine, she gave stool and urine samples three times per week. Authorities suggested removing the gallbladder, but it was actually a very dangerous operation and people have died from it. So I guess they didn't want to kill her and she probably refused. All 
All right, let's move on. After Sofer's publication in the Journal of the American Medical Association, Mary attracted extensive media attention and received the nickname Typhoid Mary. Later, in a textbook that defined typhoid fever, she again was called Typhoid Mary. She's becoming famous for something they didn't even prove yet. Sofer visited Malin in quarantine. He wanted to write a book and give her the royalties. She rejected him. And then she wrote a letter to her attorney. So she was smart. She had an attorney, but I don't know if he, it helped. And she says, quote, I wonder how the said Dr. William H. Park would like to be insulted and put in the journal and call him and his wife typhoid William Park. So there were actually two men. I think they were just researchers. It doesn't say they were doctors. Mark Milton Rosenau and Charles Chapin. Both argued that she should um, be taught just to not spread the condition and be sanitary, and they wanted her out of isolation. They felt like it was really unjust. She tried to sue the New York Health Department, um, but her complaint was denied, and the case was closed by the New York Supreme Court, so it went to the Supreme Court. In a letter to her lawyer, she complained that she was treated like a guinea pig and I did code that word. It didn't come up with the number I was looking for, but you, you can look that up if you want and use the calculator. She was obliged to give samples three times a week for six months, was not even allowed to visit the eye doctor, even though her eyelid was paralyzed and she had to bandage it at night. Hmm, I wonder why her eyelid, I wonder if she had a stroke, which we'll find out later. Her medical treatment was hectic she was given eurotropin, eurotropin in three-month courses, which threatened to damage her kidneys. Then they told her that she had the typhoid in her intestinal tract, then in her bowel muscles, and then in her gallbladder, which we already knew. They, they assumed that first, that it was <clears throat> in her gallbladder. Now remember, this is a bacteria, not a virus. She never believed she was a carrier. With the help of her friend, she sent samples to an independent New York laboratory. All came back negative. On Brother Island, where she was quarantined, almost a quarter of her analysis from March through June, March 07 through June 09, they were negative. All the samples were negative. After two years and 11 months, 211 of Malin's quarantine. Eugene Porter, the New York State Commissioner of Health, decided she could leave, you know, quarantine as long as she didn't work as a cook. But down here, we're going to just, I'm just going to paraphrase now. Working as a cook paid $50 per month. Working as a laundress doing laundry was 20 So she eventually left the private sector and went to the public sector working at spas and like, I guess, restaurants and places. It said almost wherever she worked, there were outbreaks of typhoid. However, she changed jobs frequently and Soper, the investigator, was a, unable to find her. I'm sure after she left quarantine, they tried to keep track of her. Okay, so now she started working at Sloan Hospital for Women. Now remember that one, Sloan. And soon, 25 people were infected. So the investigator found her. All right, let's read on. She fled, but the police were able to find her. And again, she was sent to Brother Island on March 27, 1915. Okay, it said little was known about her life. She remained for more than 23 years. We're going to see 23 being a number. The authorities gave her a private one-story cottage. She had her own little place. She was allowed to take day trips. And then a doctor, Dr. Alexandra Plavska, came to the island and developed a lab. It was on the second floor of the chapel and offered Malin a job. Mary washed bottles, did recordings, and prepared glasses. Now, if this doctor 
actually helped her because obviously this doctor didn't think that Mary was that contagious because I doubt she would have let her work in a, a laboratory where everything has to be pretty much sterile or else it would get contaminated. So it sounds like this was a good-hearted doctor, this Alexandra Plavska, and she gave her a job in a lab, no less. Hmm. Okay, so Mary lived uh, in quarantine six years before her death six years she had a stroke she didn't recover half of her body was paralyzed she died on november 11th of pneumonia at the age of six nine sixty nine nine people attended her funeral some of these numbers are going to be important yes, then we say some sources claim that a post-mortem found evidence of live typhoid bacteria in her gallbladder. But Sofer wrote, and that's George, the investigator, that there were no, was no autopsy, a claim cited by other researchers to assert a conspiracy to calm public opinion upon her death. So they say three deaths were attributed. There was also somebody that apparently infected people, Tony Labella, an Italian immigrant. And then there's actually somebody dubbed Typhoid John. I've never heard of Typhoid John, and there's not much out there that, well, I, I didn't research a whole lot about him because that's not the story. Okay, and then there was someone else, uh, Alfonsi Coltills, a restaurateur and bakery owner. Okay, the health technology of the era did not have a 100% effective solution. There were no antibiotics. Gallbladder removal was dangerous. Some modern specialists claim that the typhoid bacteria can hide in macrophages and then hide in the intestinal lip nodes. So it sounds like she had a lawyer So this is the first case only of asymptomatic carrier, but it was actually almost said, real. we realized that she had typhoid. Or they realized it. I guess they were psychic. There's ethical and legal issues. Typhoid Mary now is considered a colloquial term for anyone who knowingly or not spreads disease. Her urban legend status in New York inspired the name of the rap group, Hail Mary Mallon, and you can look them up because I will show you in my notes now. We're going to move on to all of my codings on Gematria. And this should be, I hope you'll find this interesting. So here we go. Here's, here's what I did. And I have another piece of paper, which I probably won't show you. It's just handwritten all the codings I've done. I've spent hours on this because I tried to make it neater rather than show you my scribbling. So Typhoid Mary, and I'm coding this according to Gematria, when God created the world with numbers, letters, and words. That's Gematria in Kabbalah. All right, so let's look at this. I see, I guess I can go like this. So Mary, Mary, Typhoid Mary, and here are the four ciphers. Remember I showed you in that calculator? It's important the 53 because her name is 53 and she supposedly infected 53 people. She's a cook. She's born in Cookstown. That's in Ireland. It's on this meridian and the 54 is important. And here's Irish cook and cook. So I coded all these. Now what I'm doing in this particular coding that I'm doing with Gematria, I'm taking all these numbers down to the single digits. So I took Mary's numbers of 154, 64, 143, and if you add them together, 5 and 1 is 6, 6 and 4 is 10, you drop the 0, 1, 64 the same, 10 down to 1, 143, so it's 1 plus 4 plus 3, reduced to 8. And so on. So all these numbers. So if you look at Irish cook, 
and this. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm attempting to take the number down to the very smallest value, the single digit, no, not a zero, because zero is nothing. So let's move on. So now I did the words that have six, six. Now six is, six, six is considered a rep digit. So it has the essence of six, but twice. And there's a lot of other words that correspond to Freemasonry and the Jesuits, and they have six, six. Now, why I'm doing this is because look at all the names that have a 6-6 six, six in them. So Henry Gelsey, 6-6. Six, six. The AMA has a 6-6. Six, six. Josephine Baker, all these names. Even um, the Sloan, that's the Sloan Hospital. Gallbladder Lab. Now these aren't, I haven't coded every single word. I tried my best. But you'll see a lot of the numbers come up with all nine across. And I wanted to show you something. Let's go back up here one second. So when you have the one, you're always going to have an eight. If you have eights, you're going to have a one, at least in these four ciphers that I showed you in the beginning. And now down to here, these numbers. So Henry Gilsey are these numbers, but they reduce down to a three, three, six, six. So whenever you have a three, you're going to have a six. Whenever you have a six, you're going to have a three. So these words here are these same words reduced down. I call it total reduction. Let's go on to the next page. Now this is only for words. If you're having word and a number, it's a little bit different. But for right now, we're just writing out the words We're writing, I'm sorry, we're writing out the numbers as words. We're not putting um, nine something as the nine. We're writing N-I-N-E or whatever. So I wanted to read you the meaning of Sloan, this hospital that she worked. The meaning Sloan, derived from the Gaelic of warrior, as well as the Celtic meaning of fighter. And then again, in Ireland, from a clan name meaning to raid, as well as fighter. This name has been mostly used as a boy's name beside in Ireland, where it was used as both male and female. Doesn't that describe Mary? She was really a fighter, very feisty, almost belligerent to it, an extent. She really stood up for herself. These are the words that I found relating to nines. These are nines all across. Now I wanted to show you something. When you have a word and one of the numbers adds up to nine, what I found is all the numbers add to nine. So if you would add 153, 29, 171, and 54 in and of themselves, you will get nine. So all of these words equal have nines reduced all the way across. I'm going to read them to you. The words are typhoid Mary, I'm sorry, typhoid fever, Ireland, Typhoid John, Carrier, Alexandra Plofska. Now I have DJ Big Wiz, and he is one of the members of the group Hail Mary Mallon. St. Joseph Regional Medical Center. Now look how high these numbers are, but they all reduce to nine. So you won't have a nine and a six reduced totally. You're only going to have, if you have one nine, they're all nines for words, not words and numbers. Okay, we have met, um, prosperous, arrested, and arrest, autopsy, Raymond was one of the names, Marino Mar I don't know why I can't say this, Mararonek, that's the town in New York or city, Brown, oh, I forgot to mention, she used the name, this is going to be important later, Mary used um, some aliases, one of them was Brown as her, her last name. One Story Cottage is nines. Public Health Threat, Health Care, the number 11, if you spell out 11, because there was something about 11 people in the family. I, I think when I looked it up on, um, just type it, her name into Google, I think it came up 
on the captions, like 11 people in the family. That's why I use that. Cerebral hemorrhage, and I forgot, yeah, we did mention she had a stroke. That's another word for stroke. Lover is nines. Stool, she had to give stool samples. She had a nervous breakdown. I'm not, I might have skipped that part. She went and had a nervous breakdown because I'm sure it's very upsetting to be arrested for not even having proof. But so we have the labella was the name of one of the people that infected. Oh, I, let me move it up. Labella. I hand wrote because after I coded all this and typed it in and printed it out, I did some more coding and I found out. So uh, Rosenau and Chapin, the two investigators, I think they might have been doctors. That's all nine. So all these words. And I think there's a few more. So listen, her lover, as again, I'll repeat, and her lover never, never said he was sick. Okay, so it's interesting. She had pneumonia and she was paralyzed on half her body. But look at these. These are all nines. But these two words are exactly alike. How, how crazy is this? These two words in all four ciphers are exactly the same numbers. And you know, when you're paralyzed, you're in danger of getting pneumonia because you're not really getting your breath. Well, you're weak anyway, and a lot of it's, it's not good. And we're gonna skip this because actually I didn't update how many times the numbers 54 and 45. Like if you look here, 45, because five and four is nine and four and five is nine. And all these nines, these words that have nine have to add up with a few numbers that equal that. Okay, so when you have, now keep in mind, 54, when I type it out, 54 as a word, it equals 54, number 54 in full reduction and 45 in reversed full reduction. 45, which is another number that appears in the words that are nines, when you spell out 45, it's 54, the same as the one above it. Now the word 50 is a 66. If I just typed in the word 50 in the calculator, it would come up 66 in English ordinal. And Cookstown, remember, is on the 54th, I guess that's the meridian. I think I wrote it, here it is on the first page. I did write, I did look it up because that's what I've seen um, Zoc, Zoc, right. I'm not saying this right. I think I'm getting hoarse from talking a lot, but Zach from Gematria Effect News uses, they look at everything. I mean, this can go really deep dates and I didn't do it like that. I decided I'm going to do it the simplest way because I am a beginner, but it is fascinating. So let me tell you about the group. Hail Mary Mallon is a rock group and this guy, BJ Big Wiz, there wasn't much about him at all, not at birth date. I think he was more like handling like the equipment and um, ASAP Rock is Ian Matthias Bavitz. But one of the guys I believe went to, went to another group and he formed something called the hospitals, which I thought it was kind of funny because we're talking about that. So September 23rd, which was Mary's birthday, that's the beginning of the equinox, the autumnal equinox. Although on this year, it began on September 22nd, but you can look at it as her birth date, September 23rd, is the first full day after the equinox. It's also the 266th day of the year. And when you write out September 23, it equals 266 in English ordinal. That's interesting because in Gematria, a lot of the, the people that are really into it they look at how many days are left and what's the prime. And I did a little bit more and we're almost done. Here are some more letters that make nine. Total, I call it the total reduction. I don't know if anybody else does it like this, but I thought, let me do it the simplest way to show you guys 
the coincidences in a story, but we're not going to say they're coincidence. I have a theory why this story happened. Um, it seems like it is true because there's so many nines. I mean, it's the highest number. Think of love. Love is the highest. Love is the greatest. We're going to read that, that Bible passage. Other, other nines are vagina, penis, Jesuit order. Remember, I said if one has a nine, like if you only knew that Jesuit order was 54, you know the rest of the ciphers are going to be adding up to a nine or reduce, I'm sorry, reduced to a nine. Freemasonic, Hell's Kitchen, baseball, but it has nine innings, 54 outs. The sun, Venus. Now I used Venus because Mary's a Libra. That's her birth horoscope. It's ruled by Venus. Ball, round, arrest. I think I mentioned that. Lover. I said that because I did. I knew love had equaled all nines because it's the highest. Nine is the greater number than one. But I didn't know that lover, and then I went back and I read the story again, Alfonsi and colloquial, they said something about colloquial in this story. So a lot of the words in this story are reduced to nine. Then we have Holy Bible, geometry, very connected to gematria, arrest, and carrier, which I think I already showed you. Um, so Carrier has both a 54 and a 45. 45 is the ninth triangular number, and we're talking about nines. And a triangular number is when you add up the numbers, they equal, um, I'm sorry, hold it, how does it work? I'm going to confuse you all now. Let me skip that a second. Gematria is gematri geometry in language. Okay, so geometry and language, because this, you can connect this to sacred geometry or triangles and the angles. All oh, right, other words was 66. We have precaution. They wanted her to take precautions. We have woman is 66, an English ordinal. Now the nine were these. I'm going to read you because nine was coming up so much. I decided, let me just code in. I remember dress to the nines. That's actually a, uh, an ex I'm going to get it on my tablet. Dress to the nines is an expression. And I'm going to just read it real quick. It's so interesting because then we're going to come up with these nine worthies in the story here. So let's read it. Nine is the most troublesome number in etymology. There are several phrases of uncertain percentage that include the word. Examples are cloud nine, nine days, wonder, whole nine yards, and you can add dress to the nines to that list. One theory was that tailors use nine yards of material to make a suit. The more material you had, the more kudos you accrued, although nine yards seems generous even for a fop. Now, this is an English site, so they use different words, but I would say I did use to sew, and nine yards for just anything? I don't think so. Okay, so let's go on. So the author of this article says the first phrase... The use of this phrase the first time is in the Progressive Dictionary of the English Language in 1835. It was to the nines. It might be to thine eyes, to the eyes. All right, now this is, very, this is the part I wanted to get to. It is worth noting that the number nine has long been used as a superlative. The nine were these were characters drawn from the pagan and Jewish history and from the Bible. This distinguished group consists of Hector, Alexander, Julius Caesar, Joshua, David, Judas, Maccabeus, King Arthur, Charlemagne, and J Jeffrey of Bullion. These were well known to medieval scholars as the personification of all that was noble and heroic. Then we have the nine muses of art, and I'm not going to read all these, but you'll see them here. 
So the nine were these. Now let's move on, and I'm almost finished with all this. So nine were these, that I put nine were these, that makes all nines, and nine muses makes 66. So the number nine makes 66, were these makes 99 in reverse ordinal, and were these also makes a 45. So all these numbers, the sixes, the nines, the, you know, of course, five and four makes nine. 66 is the 11th triangular number. And two pages back, we saw how a lot of these words have 66 in them and then 11. But she was born on November 11th, which is 1111. Again, we're connecting the 66 with the 11. Some other words that equal 11 in Gematria, Black, Jesus, English, because it reduces from 8 and 38, 8 and 3 is 11. So as we said, 9 is the 66, makes 66 in reverse ordinal. It's the 11th triangular. She had nine people at her funeral. So when we say dress to the nines, let's just go back to that a minute because that's to the highest degree, to perfection. And think about the highest degree in Freemasonry is 33. 33rd degree, three and three is six. Degree is 28, Mason is 28, and three, three times three is nine. Just when you say three times three is nine. So 33, three times three, nine. Then we have the other expression, a stitch in time saves nine. And the words coded saves nine equals all nines, reduced totally. Here we go, all to nines. So saves is 66 and nine in itself, just by themselves, not added together not as, you know, a whole phrase, they make 66 in some of the ciphers. So if you want to go read the article, it's phrases.org.uk about the nine worthies. You can type in any phrase you want and you, they'll give you like a history. And here, I already read them, but here are the nine worthies. Some of these are murderers, but you know, whatever. <laughs> six is actually a perfect number and that's another mathematical magic because that has to do with adding up all the I think it's the numbers that are multiplied or maybe it's the add-ins I'll get more I'll put that in the description but it's a per 628 and then it skips to like eight something in the 8,000 so there's really only two numbers that we probably use more often than not that are equal to uh, being a perfect number. The word perfection is 111. Number one is 11. So when I did um, story, like one story, story is 33. And then I put, I don't know why I put that 44. All right, let's go. Let's move on. She was 23 years on the island. 23 is the ninth prime number. Again, we have nine connecting to the story. She was born on September 23rd and 23. And then I also mentioned before that her name has 53 and then she killed, or well, she killed, oh uh, yeah. I'm not convinced she did anything, but it's reported allegedly that she was responsible for infecting 53. So here's the interesting part. I came up with pink being number 11. Just some like, let me see some other words. So brown, because 11 has come up so much and she used the name brown, I said, let me look up brown and pink. I love the color pink and I love the brown. And together I came up with this. Brown pink is a light fast Hold on one second. Okay, it's a it's a light fast mixture of transparent earth red and perylene red. 
thereby boosting the chroma intensity of the earth color with a modern organic pigment. Now, intensity, that's Mary. She was intense. Can you imagine when they sat on her to arrest her, how red her face was? So in the, here's the color brown pink. I wanted to show you. It's beautiful. This is on gamblingcolors.com. Here's brown pink. And here's when it's mixed with this yellow, this red. Look how pretty. Isn't that beautiful? So brown pink, according to this company, is um, it was developed by Robert Gamblin as an etching ink for his friend, a key artist in the Bay Area figurative movement. Recognizing its value as an oil color, brown pink was added to the artist grade line in 2002. So transparent earth red is all nines. Red is 54, so 54 is nine, so all the numbers across are nine. Color is all nine. Intensity is all nine. Reducing that total reduction I was telling you about. So all nine, all these words, then a story, and then I read about the color. Now there's a group called Pink and Brown. Oh, this is the one he developed a group with some other people. After this one dude, Dwyer, left Pink and Brown, he went on to be a musician with hospi the hospitals and some other groups. I don't know these people. That's not my type of music, but so I thought that was kind of funny. Pink and Brown now is at the hospital. So again, we have, I don't know, I wrote this again, I guess six, nine is 66 when you code it and it's 11th triangular number. So Mary can also be read as Miriam with a Y or Miriam with an I, and I think that's less common. I think the other, so her name really is Miriam, you know, in the ancient times. It means rebellious, bitter, beloved, marine, deep of sea. So definitely was rebellious. I'm sure she was bitter. The doctor who helped her on the island and gave her a job probably was, you know, became close with her. You know, I'm assuming these things, but she wasn't contagious, she worked in a lab. And then I watch this woman on YouTube called Miriam's Nature. She does a lot with like resin and alcohol ink and I really like that. So I wanted to just say a couple things about some of these numbers. So when we talk about love in the Bible on 1 Corinthians 13, seven, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And this is how I came up. I, I had coded love a couple weeks ago, and I said, let me do typhoid Mary. I heard someone mention it on a chat or something. And I was like, I, let me see about her. Because I knew I'm older, so I know about her. I don't know if the young people know, but it seems like she was very targeted to promote the theory of germs. And why do we have a group called Hail Mary Mellon? Because that's what they do. When you are, when they do something bad to you, they also have to do a good deed. And I also look at Jesse James. Why do we still know who Jesse James is? Because actually I have to show you my video. I'm going to do him next. I'm going to code the, I'm coding this next people, because I found out I'm related to Jesse James. And in my other video, which is private, I showed my family. I found out through my ancestry test, but I said, why do we still know? It just doesn't make sense. We still know about him. He was like a bank robber and he probably killed people because he, I think he stole for them. And actually another YouTuber made, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I've been saying this for months that he, I think he was paid to steal from the banks to give the money back. It's like a, a reverse theft. And the same with Mary. They were like, we're going to use, we saw an opportunity to use somebody and accuse them without proof. And we did a terrible thing. We kept her isolated for 23 years. So now we're just going to make her name known. Like that's a payback. I wouldn't care. 
I don't want my name known. She obviously tried to sue them. It didn't work. So I'm feeling bad for her. But when they're saying the greatest of all is love, that's because all those numbers are, love is all nines. I coded that, like I said, a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's the highest number. It's saying it's the greatest. The greatest of these is love. We're supposed to love our enemies. Why? Because in our heart, if we don't have anything negative, then we are purer and more spiritual and closer to God. I'm not saying we have to like anything that our enemy does, but we have to always keep our, our mind and our thoughts purer just for our own sake. So I think that Mary was used to promote this germ theory because I'm reading a book called The Invisible Rainbow. And it is excellent, and I'll probably, you know, write a little bit about it in the description for you. And I hope that helped. I hope that was interesting. I want you all to go ahead into the calculator, start putting some numbers in, and then go over to a couple of the channels I'm going to mention. Whiteboard Gematria, Gematria Effect News, Rose Hannah. They're the three that I started with, and there's others out there that are excellent. And it really connects. Is this coincidence? It's easy to say coincidence, but I don't think so. I think it's definitely set up somehow by who, I don't know. But my next video, when I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm, I have this whole theory of why Gematria works. And I think you'll find it very fascinating. And then hopefully I can do the Jesse James video for you because that's been on my mind since I found out two years ago that I'm related to him. So it should be quite fascinating, this journey we're on. And I thank you guys so much for being with me and listening to my video. And I love you all. If you can, just give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe if you like. And I will see you all next time. Love is the only force that can compose the differences between people, that can bridge the chasms of bitterness and animosity that so frequently and violently separate us. I call to mind these telling lines of Edwin Markham. He drew a circle that shut me out, heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win we drew a circle that took him in.